A year on from the U.S. withdrawal from a landmark nuclear deal with Iran, Tehran now says that it will resume high-level enrichment of uranium if the remaining signatory countries do not keep their promises under the agreement. The U.K., France, Germany, China and Russia now have 60 days to help protect Iran's oil and banking sectors from U.S. sanctions. In a televised speech earlier today, President Hassan Rouhani said his country will no longer be committed to certain parts of the deal. But he maintained that Iran remained open to negotiation. Exactly one year ago, President Donald Trump announced he was withdrawing from the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or JCPOA, a landmark nuclear deal brokered with Iran by his predecessor, Barack Obama. Since then, the U.S. has reimposed billions of dollars of sanctions on Iranian oil, banks and other exports. Just last week, Washington announced new restrictions on Iran's civil nuclear program and blacklisted Iran's Islamic Revolution Guard Corps, designating them as a foreign terrorist group. Two days ago, aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln was deployed to the Persian Gulf, along with a bomber task force, allegedly to counter a credible threat by Iranian regime forces. That appeared to be the last straw for Tehran. ما در برجام توافق ما بر این بوده که غنی سازی در سطح سه ممیز شست و هفت نگه داریم از این اقدام خودداری میکنیم یعنی سطحی دیگه برای ما مطرح نیست a tweet by Iran's foreign minister said today's announcement came after a year of patience in which the U.S. had made certain measures impossible to continue. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has defended Washington's latest moves, saying that U.S. intelligence believes the latest threat was for an imminent attack on U.S. forces and its allies. But he gave little details on the exact nature of this purported threat. Mr. Pompeo made the comments while on an impromptu trip to Baghdad. My visit actually to take about important events. Uh, the message that we've sent to the Iranians, uh, I, I hope, put us in a position where we can deter it. The Iranians won't think twice about attacking American interests. Reaction to President Rouhani's announcement has been cautious, with signatories promising that they want to keep the nuclear deal alive. But France has also warned that if Iran refuses to keep to its commitments under the JCPOA, it could lead to further sanctions being imposed. Tehran maintains it's open to returning to the negotiating table and is not pulling out of the deal. Over the next 60 days, the UK, France, Germany, China and Russia will now have to decide if they should support the Trump administration or return to talks with Tehran to keep the JCPOA alive. As tensions ramp up between Iran and the U.S., Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is in London to meet Prime Minister Theresa May to try and get support. Let's bring in Oli Barrett for more on that. Oli, this is a bit of a long shot, isn't it? Because Mr. Pompeo is in London, presumably to try and reaffirm that special relationship between the U.S. and Britain. But is the Prime Minister, is she in a position to offer him anything? We're certainly likely to hear lots of affirmations about the great health of the special relationship, the so-called special relationship between the United Kingdom and the United States. But Mike Pompeo will be very well aware that Theresa May is in an incredibly weakened position at the moment. Her government is weakened in terms of its authority, in terms of its ability to legislate in the House of Commons because of uh, not having an effective uh, working majority there. We also know that behind the scenes, Theresa May and U.S. President Donald Trump uh, find it hard to get on, to really understand each other uh, at times. Nonetheless, Donald Trump, of course, is due in the U.K. Uh, in June on a state visit. So Mr. Pompeo will likely want to hear some detail about how planning is moving ahead uh, with that visit uh, in mind. But, yeah, really difficult to know um, how much Theresa May can actually offer the Americans at this stage. And Mike Pompeo will be well aware that he is holding talks here in the British capital with a prime minister who may well not be in her job very much longer if some of her own MPs get their way. But, Oli, what if Iran has told signatories to the nuclear agreement, which include the UK, France, China and Russia, that they have 60 days to decide which side 
are they going to take? Will the UK be pushing to keep this deal in place? Yeah, the Iranians and the Americans really making this very clear now that you do have to pick a side here. Some very difficult decisions for the British and the other signatories to the deal to make now. Uh, clearly, the, the British and the French and uh, other signatories have been trying very hard to make this deal work in the absence of the Americans who left a year ago with all sorts of warnings about the dangers of the deal that had been signed with the international uh, community. Um, in terms of where the UK goes now, I think it will try uh, to keep this deal alive if it can. But certainly the British and the French are already saying to the Iranians that if the deal is violated by Tehran, uh, then fresh sanctions may have to be put in place and that the entire credibility of the deal can be uh, called into question at that point. So as I say, a really difficult balance for the British to strike here. Uh, Mike Pompeo, I'm sure, will be uh, leaving the UK. Uh, Theresa May, the British Prime Minister, and uh, Jeremy Hunt, the Foreign Secretary, with whom he's holding talks here in London, under no illusions about which way the Americans want the British to jump here.